This video focuses on simple exponential smoothing method for forecasting. Before going through this method, I want to briefly talk about the forecasting techniques in general. So any forecasting technique, especially the one that we are going to use, the time series methods, they use the past demand data, growth pattern, and any seasonal patterns. Forecasting includes randomness, since we cannot explain everything by using the historical data. Therefore, any observed demand has two components. One is systematic component and two is random component. The systematic component is composed of level, which is the current decentralized demand, and trend, the rate of growth or decline, and seasonality. These systematic components are used to compute the expected value of demand given past data. The random component here is the component that includes the error of our forecast. It's not possible to forecast the randomness, randomness because as it is called, it is random, but there exist measurements for measuring how big or small the error is. Some products may have a level trend seasonality or both of them at the same time. This can be examined by reviewing the past data. For example, you have the past data available for a certain amount of time and you can just look at your data or plot the graph demand versus time. Then you can see if there is a pattern like trend, seasonality or so on. So in this example, we are going to illustrate how to use simple exponential smoothing method. So assume that we are operating a cafe at RPI campus and our goal is to forecast the demand for hot coffee. So we have the data from last year, from September to May and the demand values. These are the fictitious values randomly generated. And by using these values, we are going to forecast the demand. So I have five steps that I am going to basically follow when I apply this method. The first method is plot demand versus period or time period graph to see if there is trend and or seasonalities. So I'm going to go to insert and choose my graph and then right click and say select data. So I want my Y axis to contain my demand values, so go to series values and select demand values. Say OK and go to choose X axis. So they are going to be my time values. And say OK one more time and our plot is ready. So if you look at this graph, we see that the demand is pretty stable. And this makes sense because people buy their coffee usually early in the morning and it doesn't really depend on anything. Like there is no trend, there is no seasonality or anything. So by looking at this, we can say, okay, our systematic component is level. So step two, systematic component is level means that we can choose our forecasting method based on that. So step three, for such cases, we can apply simple moving average or exponential smoothing. So exponential smoothing is preferred because it weighs more for the recent data. And recent data is given more significance. Therefore, in this case, we are going to capture it by using a smoothing constant so or a weight. So next step is to use the formulas for this forecasting technique to fill out the table here. So let's start. So the first formula we have is the initialization of level value. Basically, it means the average of the demand values that I have. So go to that cell, use average function and take the average of all of these past data. Okay, 120.889 is my initial level value. I got that one. So this formula is used. Second, I have the level formula for the next periods. So LT plus one is equal to alpha, which is my smoothing constant times the demand in that period, plus one minus alpha times level from previous period. So I'm going, okay, first I'm going to set my alpha value. Say randomly choose 0.2. Okay, so go to level calculation. 
I'm going to choose my alpha value and put dollar sign at the beginning and another dollar sign between B and 14 to stabilize alpha value times demand for that period so demand is in this cell plus one minus alpha value set a dollar sign at the beginning and between B and 14 to stabilize alpha times sorry at the end uh, okay the parenthesis here times level value from previous period so previous periods level value is in the cell and I'm just going to hit enter and using the Excel's nice property hold the bottom right and drag it down it computes all level values for you so if we go through all of these periods we see that the first value b14 and b14 here they're always the same and this is because i put a dollar sign at the beginning and in between b and 14 and all other c and d values are changing as you see this is what i want so i got my level value already the next formula says forecast so ft plus one is level t so my forecast for next period comes from the level value from this period so i am going to transfer the level value from the previous period so drag it down all the way and got my values so i'm going to highlight that value because that's my forecast value so you see this is from level zero this is from level one level two level three and so on so i got my forecast see it corresponds to period 10 which is my forecasted value and it comes from level nine and i got my forecast which is 118.810 so we got our forecast value but we are still not done step five asks me to compute the error measurements why do i need error measurements because i want to test the performance of my forecast so to do that i'm going to use three different terms mse mean squared error MAD mean absolute deviation and MAPE mean absolute percentage error. For starting, I need to compute the error in my forecast. That is represented by the difference between forecast and the actual demand. Drag it down and find it. So for the first one, I found 5.8 more than my actual demand because 115 and 120. For the second one, I forecasted 7.2 less than the actual demand and so on so error gives me these values for mean squared error i'm going to take the square of these error values so you can use different techniques i'm just going to multiply it by itself hold the bottom right and drag it down and i got the square of all of these error values for mad i'm going to use the absolute error values and app absolute value function abs is going to help me so choose the corresponding cell and drag it down i got all of them for mean absolute percentage error i'm going to use the absolute value of error divided by demand so absolute value of error is here divided by demand compute it and now i am ready to compute my error measurement the first measurement is mean squared error so to find mean squared error, I'm basically going to take the average of these values over here. Found it. For MAD, I'm going to take the average of my absolute error values. And for mean absolute percentage error, I am going to take the average of the values over here. So I found my error measurements and now I'm going to go and talk about alpha. So one may ask me why I came up with alpha equals 0.2. The answer is simple. It was just a random selection. I randomly picked 0.2, but in reality, you really want to find the best alpha value that will give you the minimum error. So. To find it, I can go and select data solver and reset these values. And now I am going to select one of my error measurements. I can select MSE, MAD, MAP, whatever I want. 
In this example, I'm going to choose MSE. So my objective is to minimize MSE and find the best value of alpha. And my constraint is that alpha must be between zero and one. So my objective is B16. So B16 is this cell. If I were to choose MAD as my objective, like to minimize the mean absolute deviation, then I was going to choose B17 cell. If I wanted to minimize MAPE, I was going to choose this cell. My goal is to minimize this value and by changing variable cells, my decision variable. So my decision variable is alpha. So B14 is the value that I want to find at the end. Constraints, my constraint is alpha must be between zero and one. By selecting this, I am good. And now I can go ahead and solve my model. Select the solving model. I have GRG nonlinear because my objective is nonlinear because of these square roots, um, taking the square of error values. My objective is nonlinear. And now I'm using nonlinear solver and get the solution. Okay, solver found the solution. All constraints and optimal conditions are satisfied. Okay, so my best alpha value is zero. So what this means is if I use a value of zero for alpha smoothing constant, then I'm going to get the minimum error. So MSE value is 46.321. Say I increased it to 0.2 again. See, MSE is now 51.6, it increased. Let's pick a bigger value, 0.8. 48.65 but with zero it is 46.32 so alpha zero gives us the minimum MSE value we could have tested for different error measurements MAD or MAP and follow the same idea one last thing again you may ask this question what happened to our forecast value like I said this 10 period 10 represents my forecast value but you may ask me what about 11 12 for this case, all of my future forecast values will be equal to this value. So say 0.2 that we used. So 118.810 is my future forecast value for period 11, 12, whatever you want to talk about.